Hello, Dr. Sepp, how are you? Can you hear me all right? Dr. Sepp? Yeah, good, good. You're, you're a little bit breaking up, Dr. Sepp. How's your Wi-Fi? My Wi-Fi is full speed. At least it, uh, it tells me like that. Can you hear me other than that? We can hear you, I... and you're a little distorted. You're a it's... lovely, handsome man, so I want the ladies and the men to see you, but I think the most <laughs> important thing is that we hear your wisdom. So as long Thank as you're... Thank you. I will, do my best to sh I will do my best to share some wisdom. Uh, and please blame it if I'm hard to be understood. Blame it to my Austrian mm -hmm. dialect. I will. Uh, I will. It's, it's, it sounds... It sounds lovely. But I just want to start off first in, you know, you came from a real professional docs background with a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, specializing in a lot of, a lot of different medicines. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that you mentioned you had your own chronic condition and that's what brought you into thinking, actually, I need to treat myself differently. But I'm always interested to hear from a classically trained, trained doctor, mm -hmm. how they then can switch and go, actually, a few things that I learned, maybe I need to look at differently. Uh, that's a big question, but I will do my best. My father is also a physician and was always practicing naturopathic medicine. For me as a new physician and a new doctor, this was not really medicine. This was just hocus pocus, more or less. Uh, until I had a case and the self-experience on the oncological department where all of the experts, really world's experts, expertise, and guidance couldn't help a poor woman that was suffering a lot. Uh, finally, I was I then who asked cancer. who had cancer and suffered from, yeah. uh, from really from massive fatigue. She disappeared almost next to the therapy that we did to her. Yeah. And I finally did ask my father and he gave me a very simple advice. I was a little bit shocked of how simple it is, but it is, was working that fantastically on this poor lady and she received strength. It didn't survive, actually, but she had so much more of life quality and vitality to share with her family and also to experience herself. I was fascinated. And from that moment on, I started to take it more serious. Yeah. <laughs> so if you think, you know, for, there's a lot of people watching and some people might be really into alternative medicine and other people mm. might feel they go to their doctor for a pill. So, you know, everyone has a different... Uh, barometer but one thing i think i've learned over the last few years dr sepp is how much our gut health controls our body and you and i discussed this very briefly this morning mm -hmm. just about how you know we can go to bed exhausted or, or we can go to sleep eating and eating wake up exhausted and mm -hmm. and think let's eat more to feel less exhausted i'd like to kind of dig you know dive right in there and just talk to you about this aspect of, of how we eat and things. Perfect. I'm focusing mainly on the modern mind medicine that is dealing and seeing and understanding the gut as to be the, the base and the source of health or disease uh, in the human body. And we specialized in developing anti-inflammatory treatments based on this understanding and belief. A uh, simple example is uh, how whatever we eat should nourish us. And yeah. once I feel nourished, I should feel better than before. But mm -hmm. how often am I consuming something that should be, or is told to be a fantastic food and meal, and I feel afterwards rubbish, yeah? I feel yeah, almost empty like or tired. Yeah. tired, not necessarily empty, very often full, suffering maybe from heartburn, uh, suffering from narcoleptic attacks. Uh, typical for me is, for example, in the morning, a little bit of a granola, uh, that is for me the personal killer. This is killing me personally. But I do oh witness God. that my wife and my brother, they can eat a granola bar in the morning and they feel energetic and they are not hungry for the rest of the day. How can that be? Because we are all so different and individual when it comes to our digestive performance and strength. And digestion is so important because with that, we break our meals down to the nutrients that we do need to either develop or also to repair if this is necessary. Mm -hmm. so, so how can you figure out, because I, I agree with you on that, that I will, you know, there'll be, uh, everyone eats differently. So, you know, these things of don't eat dairy or don't eat sugar. I mean, I feel 
the less sugar I can eat for anyone is good. But, you know, the thing that everyone is different, how can you know the kind of one you are? What are telltale signs, Dr. Sepp, okay. which can let you know this is a food that your, your body is telling you you shouldn't be eating? What are those signs that we can intuitively know? I love the way of how you described it. Your body is telling you what are the signs because we can feel it. We just sometimes uh, forgot to trust our body feelings, the inner physician that is telling us, okay, this was satisfying. Yeah, this is a source of energy. This is smelling nice. This is tasting nice. People do tell me uh, the most fantastic foods they are consuming, so rich in nutrients, but they hate the taste and they suffer afterwards from either diarrhea or constipation. So I'm asking them, look, have you ever had an experience like that with a simple porridge? I said, no, no, porridge is perfectly fine. I feel good with that. Why do you eat a granola or, let's say, uh, a smoothie Be in the morning? Because we think, I know why I do, because there's Gales, which is a, 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 a lovely um, bakery here. It has a granola bar, which is to die for. Okay, so... I have no doubt you also, when you eat a granola bar, you want to feel afterwards better than before. This is like with yes, exercise. I can, yeah. with the wrong intensity of exercise, make my body suffer. And afterwards, I feel like a just surviving warrior. That is not yeah. a good performance in physical activity. Physical activity also should satisfy my master plan of evolutionary buildup. Uh, it should make me feel good and alive and vital. So is it okay? The same I want to go food? into I want to go into that. But so step one, then your mm. message, because if they can't get to come to to um, Viva Maya, it's like listen, listen, listen and trust your body. Step one is when it comes to food, never feel guilty. Always enjoy it, but enjoy with awareness. Slow down. Take a seat. Start uh, behave as if it is a rendezvous. Yeah, you want to get the most out of it and the best out of it. You mean so, a romantic rendezvous? A, rond a romantic rendezvous where you take a, uh, a seat, have a create a, a quiet environment so that you really feel and sense what is going on. Smell on the stuff. Have a small bite. Let it melt on your tongue almost, and then consume it. And the moment you are not feeling interested anymore, stop it. Or if from the beginning on, it is not attracting you nicely, stop it right away. And you will see that it's working very well. At the end of the day, okay, we so are very... I love, the, I love this, actually, because I think that we live in a world, you know, my, my, members of my family, my father and I eat very fast, and, and my mother would savor everything. But but that thing of slowing down to eat, because I know a friend of mine, I think it was at Viva Maya, and she had to chew a certain number of times. And, and can you just explain medically, medically that, you know, it's like... If you eat it too quickly, your tummy doesn't know you're, you're full or something. There's that connection. But if you can explain that, I think it's good to know why we should eat slower. If you chew a bite properly, you increase the surface of the food inside of your mouth. More surface means more contact. More contact means you are sensing the flavor that is giving you more flavor, more yeah. of the good flavor, but also more of the bad flavor. At the same time, with this bigger surface, it's easier for the saliva to mix underneath. The saliva is containing enzymes. It is helping your, you to digest already inside of your mouth. But, and that is the most important and also enjoyable part, uh, while you are sensing on your tongue, you are not only sensing sweet, bitter, sour, umami, uh, and salty, you are sensing also the composition of the food. And this information is sent through a brain nerve, the vagus nerve, down to your intestine. And the feedback of the intestinal organs of how well the food inside of your mouth will be digested is then showing up again in, in your mind and in your brain and is making the sense of flavor complete. And suddenly it's very either desirable or it's not so tempting or maybe in worst case, really suspicious. So if you ate a tough red bit of steak yes okay i mean i imagine that my instinctive feeling i don't particularly like tough red steak but you know i would feel the i mean is it sending a message down to saying to the digestive enzymes we're going to need more of you to digest this is that for a example, message as well some some foods for example like the proteins or foods very rich in protein require a high amount of stomach acid and this high amount of stomach acid is only produced if we attract here 
yeah, and tell the uh, and let the body know protein is coming down. Please, stomach, produce more stomach acid. Ah, my so stomach. If you don't give it enough time, it won't Perfect. get to work. The army won't prepare for the attack of the of the heavy food. Exactly. Okay. If you think of, do you like ceviche? Ceviche. ceviche. I quite like ceviche. I <laughs> mean, I sushi, mine. maybe. No, I yeah. hate sushi. I okay. hate sashimi. I re it's weird. I've never, ever, ever been into that food. And why? Because you don't like the taste of it. I don't I like the taste, yeah. Okay, so your body is telling you, don't eat it. And your body is run by your instinct. And if the human animal inside of you is making you experience something like that, please trust it. There is a reason for that. Maybe you don't know the proper reason, but what is making you not feeling good is not your friend. That is okay. not true in a relation, not All true right. in economics, and especially okay. not in medicine. So, so that's, an, that's an initial thought about food, which I love. You mentioned to me earlier today too, which I know you're going to go on to now, but it was very interesting because um, we, we, we talk on this channel about getting, getting fit. And there's a lot of women who are in their 50s really getting fit. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of girls in their 30s, 40s who are lying exhausted on the sofa or 50s or 60s saying, I, I have no energy to eat the right stuff or to, or to get fit. So I just want you to think about that. But also what's very interesting is I've done exercise three times a week in something I feel good about. And I was wanting, oh, is this lovely lady, Booth Cockapusa, get on this bike. You need to do cardio. Yeah. And I did it yesterday, but my body was exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested when you say the balance of, when you're listening to your body with in terms of exercise, because mm -hmm. if we haven't for a while, won't we be more exhausted? So I want you to talk, I'd love to talk about that. There are two differences, big differences. The one is the physical activity that you perform every day. And this is a, a physical activity that should be done in the intensity that you feel good. So if you are, for example, uh, sitting on a bicycle or, uh, or jogging through the park and you end up with a red face and you feel like a victim, that was too fast. That is not friendly. And that is not making you stronger or better. But so If for you the feel daily, like a victim, you mean if, it, if your body reacts like it's... Oh. Exactly. If you okay. afterwards yep. are yep. thinking, oh my God, I'm so happy that it's over. That's not good. We are designed to walk about uh, 35 to 40 miles a day. We are designed for that. No one, no, uh, no one of us is executing it. But if we, the closer we are to, our, uh, to the initial, so in our performance, to our initial plan in master plan of evolution, the better we do feel. But so for the daily physical activity, physical activity in higher duration, um, ongoingly, but not high intensity. You should feel afterwards if it is, as if it was almost boring. Yeah. But sometimes you need this thing of inconvenience, the challenge for you to develop further. And that yeah. should happen once, maximum twice a week. Then it could be that you are saying you are doing a little bit of an inter, uh, interval, uh, high intensity interval training, for example, for 15 minutes, half an hour, maybe one hour. And you will see if you do the high intensity interval training in the right intensity, you are not feeling like a victim afterwards, but you are tired. Yeah, there's a Norm difference. Yeah. It, it's, normally, uh, yeah. normally, if you are, if you are physically active, you can you will find the right intensity and the right speed that allows you to walk or to run for hours yeah without feeling but you afterwards think, Dr. Set, that some people mm. are built for running and some people like a lady i just want to throw some yes, some, yes. We've got lots of questions so I, I don't like to ignore the ladies as we go the, there's a lot of comments about and i think you can read them too somebody saying what's the right amount of steps per day other people saying i agree i don't like high intensity others saying you know is housework a form of exercise, of course it is, because it's so yeah. physical. Um, but what are your thoughts in terms, because I think when there's some people saying, I hate running, like I, I personally, I hate running. My yeah. old business partner, Susanna, it releases for her endorphins. It gives her, really helps her with depression. You know, there's very good benefits. So she feels afterwards, that feeling you say one should have, that feeling of, you know, Perfect. I've achieved, yeah. I feel good. And Trini, if you feel differently after running, running is not your intensity. We are all hereditary, uh, born with a certain set of genes. 
And those genes do rule of how quick and good we metabolize. But to have, for example, or to be a low metabolizer or a slow runner is not necessarily an excuse to not, from time to time, challenge myself. Especially if we think of the next generation, our children, our children to benefit of, uh, from uh, our efforts to uh, challenge our genes. Epigenetic factors, like uh, in your case, if you don't like running, at least then to twice a week trying to do an inter uh, intermittent uh, high intensity training with a set of running would change the performance of your genes and your future children will perform them differently because they get the epigenetically change genetic uh, activity from you directly. The same thing also with the sugar. We do know that the performance or the behavior of the father is on sugar is changing the way of how his daughter will then uh, um, will then metabolize sugar. It is before she's alive. Before she's before alive. Before she's alive. Okay, so yeah. when you say my future children, I'm so flattered because I'm 56. I'm not going to have any more children. Um, uh, but but okay, that I think that's very interesting because. Um, when Lila, my child, I, I, mm. I put on 40 kilo, I ate a loaf of bread a day. Mm. Her comfort food is carbohydrate. Yeah. This is changing. This is changing also. This is also the reason why we and our siblings are acting and behaving and reacting differently. And if I, that's like with my partner, my partner is a different person. We live in the same household. We live almost the same or similar lifestyle. And one is living very good with this lifestyle and the other one not so good. So if I have cojones enough and belief and trust enough, I will try to alter my lifestyle according to my needs and my, it should make me feel good. It should make me feel uh, better than before. And physical activity, if people are concerned, if they are doing uh, too much of walking a day, Please walk more. Walk yeah, because you, you love, I, I can sense when you said that, that we were built yeah. to walk uh, 40 kilometers a day. But it, I mean, if you had to tell everyone you could, I mean, it goes against everything you say, actually, Doc, so I won't say it. No, I won't say it. I was just thinking walk would be the one thing to get. If, if somebody's doing nothing, you might start, say, start, start walking, and, to start and walking. The, exactly. And yeah. allow yourself to understand that the child is not learning to run within one week or one a year. This takes 10 years. If you, were, if you are now looking back after 30 years of, of limited physical activity and you are suddenly surprised or realizing yourself to be not as active and fit as you would have wished to mm -hmm. be, start physical activity, but in a low intensity. Yeah. A professional sportsman or woman or an actress or an actor they are uh, physically active three to four, sometimes six hours a day, sometimes even more than that. Yeah. Of course, they are looking different. If I would walk four hours would, a day, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I want to ask you two <laughs> things. One, I think I, I know what you're going to say. But because there's lots of questions about should really we be having a plant-based diet? That's one of the questions that mm -hmm. keeps coming up. And also, what's the thing about what you eat, what you drink when you eat? Mm -hmm. Uh, when you eat, you want to digest because the nutrition and the nourishment is only taking place uh, if you um, unfold the nutrients out of your food and allow it then to absorb, enter your bloodstream and getting metabolized through the liver. Therefore, you need your digestion tools. You have your saliva, you have your stomach acid and you have the enzymes that are produced by your digestive organs. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if this kind, uh, if this combination, time, yeah, yeah if this time is getting diluted by half a liter of, uh, of water, no matter if it is containing calories or not, if it is containing lemon juice or not, this is diluting the whole thing. And what is diluted is not as powerfully digested as if, as if it is pure. For digestion, we need digestion liquids. And digestion liquids can only be produced once you are hydrated. So please satisfy your need for hydration Prior to the meals, stop around 20 minutes before the meal you're drinking. During the meal, just enjoy maybe the one or the other sip, but not really uh, a full glass or a mug full of something. Okay. And once you stop the eating, wait another one hour, maybe one and a half hours before you start drinking again. And you will find out 
that things that are for you normally hard to digest are suddenly much easier. I always have to think. So I'm, so I'm no, going to say that there's, um, you know, I think some people will find that they come to you and they feel mm -hmm. I'm going to change my way of life because they've had such gut issue. They'll do anything mm -hmm. to have a good digestive system and therefore have a really healthy body. So I but, get that. There's definitely people out there, Dr. Sepp, who think, but what happens to my glass of wine at lunch? So would you, or dinner or whenever, so would you say, I mean, is this, do you believe that you never do the shit? Or do you believe this is like, <laughs> you do this for a month and then you, you know, what's your belief for generally normal women, not your incredibly healthy self? Yeah. Be happy in being not perfect, but making more often better choices. Life is not mm -hmm. ideal. And if I try to live the ideal lifestyle, I will end up frustrated and demotivated. I will not even start trying to do that. Yeah. So it's better yeah. to say I live a good compromise. I maybe start when I was so far only drinking with the meals. You mm -hmm. interrupt maybe your morning uh, routine at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And there you are satisfying with understanding and, uh, and, and active. You are a need for hydration and are drinking one mm -hmm. liter of water, for example. And you're doing the same thing uh, in the afternoon or across the afternoon again. And if this okay. is making you feel better, you are on the safe side. Really, don't try to f uh, blame the food to be the one reason why you are either yeah. fit or not fit. It's normally yeah. more our behavior on okay. the food that we consume so too much. Then that leads to a question. Um, and the lady has, has asked a good question, but it's very relevant. How many hours should we leave after we eat dinner before we go to bed, says Roseanne. And I know you have a strong belief about, you know, because I said to you um, before now this conversation about fasting, when should we fast? And you mm -hmm. talked to me about, well, if you eat the right time, you can do it every night. But can you discuss that a little bit more? Because I found that fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing. I do believe that intermittent fasting has a huge benefit for the body. And this is also scientifically proved. This is a little bit like uh, the role of sugar on our, uh, on our health. This is, we don't need to discuss this is rubbish. So it's not Fine. beneficial. Let's call it, let's call it like that. Uh, yeah. By the end of the day, it's not only my brain that is a little bit tired and my muscles that are feeling heavy, for example, and do have a huge desire to, for rest. It's also my gastrointestinal system that is tired. My stomach is as tired as my uh, biceps is. And in this situation, I feel low in energy. In my attempt to be super efficient, I exchange rest now with, my, uh, with eating something that is promising a lot of calories, a lot of energy. And that is the wrong decision. That is the wrong strategy. Because now my body that is exhausted or really tired after some hours of performance acti and activity is struggling with the fact that it should digest something. And if it is struggling with this maldigestion, we do suffer suddenly from fermentation, from putrefication, from decay going on inside of my intestine. And the intestine is directly linked to the brain, the brain gut axis, for example. Inflammation is starting, depression is starting, restlessness is starting. Uh, my metabolism is changing and I feel restless across the night or I sleep like someone who is really under narcosis, but the next day I awake and feel less uh, yeah, recovered. I feel yeah. low in energy. So if people do, uh, do uh, contact me and asking what they could do to improve their quality of sleeping, I always recommend, please, in the evening have something, if you have to eat something because you are hungry, eat something vegetable-based, warm, almost uh, a meal as if you would feed an ill child a vegetable soup. It's alkaline, it's hydrating you, it's pre-digested, mm -hmm. goes in quickly, nourishes you quickly, and it's unlikely that you have too much of it because it's not so much of comfort food. Yeah. Uh, or you are Can just skipping your dinner. Can I ask a couple of questions? Please. Just a couple of questions on. So somebody's saying, just wrote up saying, doesn't intermittent fasting reduce your metabolism drastically in the long run? These are just, it's really important to answer these questions whilst they come up. Uh, there is uh, intermittent fasting is affecting the sympathetic neural system that is responsible for our fight or flight axis. 
the fight or flight axis is switched on if I drink my coffee, if I drink my green tea, if I drink, uh, drink my chai latte, or if I'm uh, listening to the newspapers right now. If I'm exposing my body to stress, then mm -hmm. my metabolism is starting. But this is a metabolism that is run on sugar, on insulin, that is a pro-inflammatory metabolism. Whereas if I'm continuously living on an intermittent fast, yeah, and I'm not starving my body. I allow my digestive organs to rest four to six hours extra. So it means in total 16 to 18 hours a day, they will perform better. Mm -hmm. And my metabolism will focus on sources of energy that are not sugar, because for 16 to 18 hours, sugar is not coming in. So my body will start to tidy up through the process of autophagy, fat burning, protein burning. And that is exactly what I want. And if I combine that with an active lifestyle in the right intensity, I keep my muscles and I tidy up my cells and I get the brain of a Nobel Prize winner. And the skin, of course, of a model. <laughs> I mean, this is a whole book, this process of our body, you yeah. know, having time to regenerate. Because I think we hear on a top level that, you know, we need sleep to regenerate our body so it can work internally and not have to struggle with superficial things like digestion at 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. I think there's some people, I think that one of the hardest things might be that some people, it's like when I gave up smoking, I was told, mm -hmm. understand what's a nicotine a withdrawal and what's an actual hunger pain and that will help you to not put on weight after you smoke because you if you say to your body i wouldn't only be hungry now mm -hmm. so how can we if we want to change a little bit dr sepp how can we actually not think i'm going to bed hungry i need to eat something mm -hmm. you know because that i'm sure happens of course of course and again you must not starve none of you and uh, this is why when I'm in the evening arriving at home and taking my seat on the couch and I'm feeling low in energy uh, and I, I should really start to sense into my body and try to answer two things. Is my stomach now feeling empty because it's empty or am, is my body feeling empty because I'm feeling run down in energy or is my body feeling hungry and starving for calories that I now need to consume? In nine out of 10 cases, I just feel empty and tired. What is the best reaction normally? The most physiological reaction is to just do something nice for yourself. A hot bath, a hot bottle, for example, a cup of tea, glass of water, a little walk uh, around, the, uh, around the block and going to bed a little bit earlier. And you will be surprised of how well you feel the next day. I can tell you a thousand things, but you need to experience that. And this is why it is good to once maybe just make a decision and say, look, I'm now living for one week without a dinner. I don't want to starve myself. And if I'm really feeling yeah. like starving, I have a piece of bread and butter, sourdough bread with a little bit of butter in the evening. That is perfectly fine. I tried prior to that um, with a little bit, say a cup of tea. But after one week of skipping dinner, uh, people should sense and feel against and try to get an idea if they are feeling better or less good yeah. than before. If they are feeling better than before, they discovered for themselves a new therapeutic tool. And that's the same with the chewing if, uh, if, or also with the physical activity. One week of physical activity, not in a crazy intensity, but in an intensity where you're feeling good afterwards, uh, will see you by the end of the week feeling great, maybe already have lost the weight, but definitely uh, allowing your body to stay a little bit longer in the fat burning mode. It's, so that's when you say it. consider skipping dinner, mm -hmm. I, the idea for me, Dr. Sepp, of having lunch at one and then not eating again till nine o'clock mm -hmm. the next morning is, is I'm, I'm looking at you thinking, I'll never do it. Yeah, so, but you can so what's, also... So what's interesting is you're saying set yourself that challenge you know i think also it's not like we're running around a thousand miles per hour so even though we're having very active days right now because most people are staying at home to yes. me it's the best time to do it you're a bit bored you might want to eat in the evening you've got to think of something else you can do but it's that challenge isn't it i, I like the fact i want you to send the message out to people who are listening to you to you know if, that challenge if you if you have the suspicion that your daily routine is making you feel ill and making you feel low in energy, 
change something. Without the change, nothing will happen. There is no golden pill existing, neither in the traditional Chinese medicine, nor in the Ayurvedic philosophy, or in the allopathic medicine that is changing, yeah. doing changes for you. So just give it a try. Can I Little ask, things. Um, there's, there's, um, do you think intermittent fasting is bad for postmenopausal women? No. No, definitely not. The postmenopausal women is suffering from a huge imbalance. So first of all, uh, that is enough material for doing a seminar for a week. But uh, yeah. the postmenopausal women is uh, dealing with the fact that the body has changed, the metabolism has changed because the composition of the hormones has changed. We cannot deny the fact that this body is differently performing like before. Mm -hmm. What if you, if you, it's not an illness, but if you understand it a little bit as if change, change situation, this requires a little bit more of awareness. You would now treat the children by being super careful, yeah, making things super simple, trying to satisfy the basic needs of the child, being well hydrated, having enough time uh, for physical rest and sleep overnight, but also plenty of mm -hmm. uh, possibilities to be physically active without exhausting themselves. And that will work through beautifully. Uh, beautifully. For, for with, the, with the intermittent fasting, very often postmenopausal uh, women do experience this lack of uh, yeah, energy edge. Yeah? There is yeah. the, 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 the dynamic is disappearing a little bit. Yeah? This vitality is disappearing. And they try yeah. to exchange them, the estrogen and the progesterone that is going low with insulin and cortisol. And yeah. this is coming with yeah. a change in lifestyle and with an increase in very crispy or sugary stuff that is leading to the state where your metabolism is getting really low and old yeah. and yeah. the rest of the body is also growing older before time. And that is not yeah. necessary. But okay. again, one week or each society does contain a, a, a tradition of three weeks or a moon phase of, an, of like Lent or Ramadan, if it is performed yeah. and practiced in a traditional way. This is a time where you make a complete change from your normal routine and people yeah. and the whole society is then experiencing a beneficial change. But, the, but I think the difference with Ramadan is they fast during the day and they eat at night. So you're eating on, an, uh, on a full tummy. I don't know if that's... This is why I mentioned the traditional way of yeah. Ramadan. The way yeah. of how Ramadan is now performed is differently. Okay. The way of how we are, <laughs> we are now counting our steps if you if you just believe and think of biology of how weird is that <laughs> yeah it's very weird there's another couple of questions about you know there's a lovely jersey girl she's saying i'm trying to figure out should i go plant-based but generally i have a well-balanced diet with protein and fish what's best yeah. um what is the easiest to digest the easiest to digest is normally a cooked vegetable thing yeah, or grain meal. That is easy digestible. You are feeding the newborn children with that and they are building muscles. They are building massive of substance within the first year without consuming a huge amount of protein. Yeah. We are normally super efficient on protein um, and the, the, the normal citizen is consuming overall a little bit too much of protein. And protein is acid. Whereas, yeah. for example, the vegetables and the oils and the fats are more alkaline. So if you want to improve your acid alkaline balance that is so important for uh, keeping our body free of inflammation, it is a good chance, a good strategy to consume vegetables. Fruits, yeah. by the way, are in most cases pretty acid as well. Okay. Well, well, we'll go into details later. There's a lady here saying, Michelle, when we were talking mm -hmm. about doing some intermittent fasting also if you're postmenopausal, and she said this is an awful idea for perimenopausal menopausal women i have to say from my own experience dr sepp that mm -hmm. reducing sugar understanding how cortisol production i really need to keep low because mm -hmm. my adrenal glands need to be functioning well and if they don't function well i'm producing more cortisol which i know is an incredibly bad cycle so just for me personally michelle i really know that I want my body when it's when at night to be working on healing me and giving mm. me back my nutrients and not having to <coughs> digest. So I know for me, I'm going to try this. I'm going to eat at six as my last thing. And I'm going to try for a week and see 
as well. Um, I have peer on my lip, everyone, so I've got to... <laughs> um, better sleep, I think you mentioned, I'm just going through some uh, questions, but I think better mm -hmm. sleep, you mentioned about not giving your body too much to do at night and allowing it then to get ready for sleep. Yeah. Um, If yeah. people do feel very hot overnight <clears throat> and across night, it's because of the increased blood circulation in the liver. Typically, this is experienced after a glass of wine too much or a glass of beer too much or a very late and heavy meal. Over nighttime, this is leading to fermentation, putrefaction, and this is making the liver start to be very active at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. where it should normally rest deeply. And that is increasing the body temperature and making me rest deeply. Which is why I think people uh, who talk about they can't sleep, maybe they've had a drink and they, they always have that relationship. There's a lot of questions also about the importance of prebiotics. Can one take too many, you know, and, and about kombucha and about the apple cider vinegars and the lemons. Mm -hmm. So can we just talk a little bit about those things you can put in your body to help reduce mm -hmm. your acidity levels and what you think is good? Mm -hmm. uh, probiotics, prebiotics are very important, are very useful also for some clients, but not for the average uh, person again. It needs an individual testing, it needs also an individual understanding of the concerns or issues, health issues going on inside of the intestine, inside of the body, to choose then the right probiotic. This is why I love the idea of prebiotics, like kombucha, for example. A prebiotic is allowing you to feed those microorganisms inside of your intestine. And what you want in your intestine is a huge diversity. And diversity is benefiting or is growing on a, on a soil that is, uh, that is receiving mainly a very colorful diet. So most important is really, if you want to have happy gut bacteria, have a colorful diet, not a raw diet, but a colorful diet that is containing vegetable, that is some, uh, containing carbohydrates and grains, yeah. and sometimes containing also proteins. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Another question that's coming up a lot, and I think we've started to discuss this about when we're eating during the day, I yeah. think there's a lot of people who eat late at night and they skip breakfast, okay? I know how I feel about breakfast because I've started a breakfast that Jenny, who's our mm. mutual friend, introduced me to. So for the last week, I've had potatoes with flaxseed oil and, um, and avocados for breakfast mm. Mm. And, it's, uh, and parsley. And I just, it's, it's been very calming. It's very odd to describe a food as calming. But, yeah. you know, compared to my croissant and coffee like let's go in with some acid straight away but can you give your thoughts on you know how important is breakfast what should people really be putting in their body when they've got a totally empty tummy and they can take anything maybe they can take more <laughs> not anything but they can take more than perhaps yeah. at the end of the day when you're saying our, our digestive system is really tired Yeah. In the morning, please consume your meals with a little bit of awareness, with an increased awareness. If someone is consuming the breakfast hastily sitting in, pre in, the, uh, in the window of Pret-a-Manger, for example, like that, this is not a very good way of how to, you can digest and also send something beautiful. A meal should be making you happy. In the morning, yeah. if you are feeling low in energy in the morning, have something warm. But first of all, hydrate yourself. So the first thing should be you're awake in the morning and you're drinking a big glass of water, body temperature, so that it's going in very quickly and is, is hydrating you. Then you have saliva enough, stomach acid enough, and then you can eat. I prefer, me personally, in the morning, a little bit of a warm grain. If it is now an Indian Italy, for example, or if it is a porridge, or if it is a roasted slice of sourdough bread with something fat, That is for me important. I do know if people want to kill their hunger completely, of course, have them a, a good quantity of protein in the morning. Mm. An egg or bacon or fish can help them fantastically. But out of 100 people that I meet, uh, 100 London uh, citizens that I, that I meet and test for food intolerances and allergies, 90 are allergic against eggs. Not quick allergic, but really? suffering from a slow... 90 of 100 onset. are allergic against eggs. Nine out of 10, yeah. Slow onset allergic reaction. And this oh. is triggering inflammation. And again, when you are suffering from inflammation, cortisol is going up, insulin is following, you are more insulin resistant, your desire for sugary, for rich in calorie food is increasing. And this is changing your lifestyle again. This, mm. When it comes to a breakfast routine... 
have a little bit of a change from time to time. Yeah, from time to time could be okay. two, yeah. three choices that you are enjoying every day. Mm -hmm. So tell me, do you think really from everything you're saying, is there an importance mm -hmm. to you, Dr. Sepp? Because I've had this conversation with you, a few people, of really making sure your diet is more alkaline than acidic. How important uh, is that in your you're... methodology? From my understanding, the diet is important, but not as important as my lifestyle is. Because the most important thing in my life that my body is experiencing and my metabolism is experiencing is my life itself. If yeah, I live it very intensively, I'm on fire and fire is producing smoke. And smoke is in this case, acid metabolites. One of the most classic one is, for example, carbon dioxide. What we are breathing away, it's an acid gas. And the more active I am, of course, the more of this acid uh, gas I, my body tries to get rid of. So yeah. the most alkaline thing on the other side is you to rest. It's you to have a break. It's you to exclude from the environmental conditions a little bit. This is allowing your body to deal with the acidity that you build up. Also, mm. a low intensity physical activity is good. Most yeah. acid foods are the proteins or rich in protein uh, uh, foods and ingredients are sugars, of course. Alcohol is counting for the sugars. Uh, and most of the fruits, because they are very rich in, in sugars. Vegetables and some of the rich in, uh, rich in starches food are also alkaline. Oils are alkaline. And mm -hmm. this is this big misunderstanding. People do eat at the moment when they want to change their lifestyle because they are unhappy with their body's performance to yeah. a very acid lifestyle with very high quantity of protein. And that is shortly making the body experience a change in the reality and the change in the, in the habit, and that is good. But mm -hmm. on mid to long term, it is making the body yeah, suffer better. and yeah. 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 So um, we've got to finish quite soon because otherwise Instagram will cut us off. I, I can't tell you, it's been such a great conversation. I think if people want to continue um, mm -hmm. with looking at this whole um, viewpoint that Viva Maya has, Mm -hmm. I know that some of the founders of Viva Maya wrote some books, and I know that an English journalist, India Knight, wrote a book, I think. But, mm -hmm. but what would you say if people want to find out more? I mean, you can book in, hopefully, and go to Viva Maya when it uh, reopens. But is there, are there books to read on the subject of how to eat healthily, which Viva Maya has produced? Uh, of course, and if you are visiting one of the, for example, either our, uh, our homepage or if you are using other platforms where you can uh, um, uh, buy a book, you will find books on based on uh, the Maya medicine. I have here a few of them. So M-A-Y-R, just so people know, because they might put in M-A-Y-E-R. For example, M-A-Y-R. Okay, let's see that book. Hold up again. So that is Modern um, Maya Medicine. Modern Modern Maya, M-A-Y-R, Modern yeah. Maya Medicine. Medicine. Type that okay. in and you will find books about uh, the lifestyle changes that are required, uh, the diagnostic standards about the connection to science, for example, because I know people are very skeptical if things are very simple. But yeah. really the top golden advices that I can share with your followers, for example, is really don't make things too complicated. Make them simple. Trust your body, yeah. trust your instincts. If something is tasting and feeling nice, it is mm -hmm. a friend. Chew properly, don't drink together with the meals. Try not to have raw stuff in the evenings. And yeah. try to be a little bit more physically active. Low intensity, that's normally working okay. very well. All right. So I know that I'm going to take away today, I'm going to try and not lie in bed and eat at, at 9, 10, 11. I'm going to eat at 7 mm -hmm. with Lila and then not snack through the evening. That's my commitment to you. I'm going to try <laughs> that for a week. And um, also just to, you know, um, not to drink with my meals. That's I'm going to try that too. So those are my two things. I'm going to try this week and see the reaction. I've so enjoyed talking to you. Um, Thank you very and I much. I think our audience have really... Uh, really appreciated your knowledge and experience. They send you lots of hearts. So um, we might be, if we're still, you know, sitting like this in a few weeks, do a part two on more detail of this subject, because I know I would love to learn more. And I'm sure they would too, because they're all hearting you heavily. Um, but <laughs> thank, thank you very you much so for much. sharing 
me also to your friends. This is fantastic. Thank you very much. If someone wants to get an individual, uh, for example, recommendation, please use our telemedicine channels on Viva Maya for okay. a session then one to one. But it was a pleasure. Really keep it simple. Give it a try. Allow it some time to affect your body. Yeah. And I have no doubt you will enjoy it. Brilliant. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. Thank you. Okay. Best regards. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.